Have you ever wondered what a freelance voiceover studio looks like? So have I. <laughs> Everybody's probably looks pretty different. And with it being such an isolated job, you don't really get to see what it looks like. So today, I'm gonna show you behind the curtain. I'm gonna show you where I get the work done. And you can let me know in the comments below what yours looks like if you have a studio. And if you don't, what your ideal studio would look like. So come with me, let's go ahead and take a look. So this is it, this is my door. Now, this used to be a bedroom, but now it is uh, my studio. So coming in, looking around the room, first thing you'll find is the editing station is first here. Uh, the PC is up at the top there, and then the booth itself, just next to it. So that's where pretty much everything gets done between these two areas. On this wall, we have something that I really love. It's, uh, it was a gift. It is a beautiful signed Critical Role poster. What better to get into the booth than to see some very inspiring voiceover artists right across from you. Um, so let's talk about the editing station first. So here at the editing station, double monitors. Yes, I do game here as well, um, but mostly work. Uh, ask my wife, she'll tell you I always work, I don't game. We've got our basic keyboard, mouse, two monitors, microphone if I need to go on meetings. I don't record here, obviously. Sennheiser's uh, headphones. I think these are the HD 580. <sighs> Good thing I threw them. Um, I don't remember and I don't think it says on them. Oh yes, they are the HD 559s. Yeah, um, they don't make these anymore, I don't think. So if I ever need to get new ones, um, I'll have to just hunt, I suppose, uh, for secondhand ones. PC up top and uh, everything kind of get snaked down the back there uh, to all the components. Also a board that I don't really use that much. I wish I did. Most of the markers got used up by my two-year-old and uh, now it doesn't work so good. So a um, little bit of essential oils as well make the place smell nice. I don't always run this but when I do it makes me happy. Thank you again to the wife. And lastly this, this mouse specifically is an MMO mouse. And you might be thinking, oh wow, you love World of Warcraft, but I don't. That's the surprising part. Um, it's actually really, really useful for all sorts of stuff. Uh, having all of these extra buttons on your mouse for video editing and for sound editing, you can put a lot of your macros right on your mouse. So I'm gonna have another video about that in the future. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video if you're interested in finding out the productivity hacks that can be had there. Let's get in the booth as well. So first off, you can see it's upholstered with this beautiful torn up linen. Um, my cats like to climb on this and I probably need to replace it at some point. But coming inside, ba -da -da -da, it probably sounds a little bit different in here. Probably. I hope so. Looking around, uh, we can see we just have like basic lights. We have inside uh, a monitor. We have the microphone itself. This is a Rode NT1 mic on the Rode Swivel arm stand, built directly into the desk uh, with the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 uh, sound interface. Um, everything here goes into a little USB hub. It goes up into a hole. And from there, it goes off to the PC. Bad peripherals are actually great for your, <laughs> for your sound booth because they're pretty squishy and quiet a lot of times. So if the mouse doesn't make a lot of noise, it's wireless, its battery goes on and on and on. And this keyboard is extra squishy, makes no sound at all. So quiet, whisper quiet. And uh, I even put a little piece of foam underneath it just to make sure. Old Magic the Gathering playmat just to top things off. And some more Sennheisers if I want to monitor the audio directly. So this booth itself is basically a small shed that I fit into a room. I actually initially built this shed in a different apartment. And when we moved into this house, I had to disassemble this entire thing and move it to this house. Thank you, Stu. You, you were very helpful. I appreciate you. Um, but this thing is built like a shed. It's actually just two by four frame inside, a uh, little bit of MDF on the outside just to make it a little bit less ugly. Inside that frame, we have Rockwell acoustic foam and then just 
fabric on top just to make it look a little neater. I could add base traps, I could add all sorts of things to make this a little bit better acoustically. There's always room for improvement and that's something that you're going to find is that you're always trying to get that little bit better. Beyond that, other little things I can improve. This door, terrible. I gotta slam it shut up. I'm just kind of shove it in. This is, you know, not ideal. You can see it's not actually closed here. I'm, originally I wanted to put on a gasket to like seal it closed. Also, no ventilation. So there's lots of things you can do <laughs> to make your booth better. But really, the first thing you need to worry about is just your acoustics, making sure it sounds good in there. And after you've done that, then you can start worrying about adding this and adding that and getting it all just exactly the way that you want it. For now, this basic booth has done incredible for me. So that's it. That's my studio. Thanks for coming along and having a look at it. If you liked the video, go ahead and like. If you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and subscribe because I'm going to keep on doing it. And don't forget to hit that bell icon because YouTube told me to tell you that. Uh, anyways, Greybeard out. We'll see you in the next one.